What's going on, everybody? One of our viewers, Pedro, he mentioned that there was a haunted house in the Emerald Graves. I think we were talking about the haunted mansion at Disneyland or something. No gods, no stuff. I suspect this place has been abandoned for some time. But with that in mind, when I walked up on this place, I was saying, you know, this is probably it. Just kind of reminded me of it a little bit. Anyone who's ever been to the haunted mansion in the original Disneyland, uh, see kind of a familiarity in the front of this place. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have brought Iron Bowl and Cole along with Sarah. Because Sarah freaks out. Cole would have found it very interesting. Sarah. Seekers go first, yeah? Something stirs here. Stay alert. Cole might have even found friends here or something. I don't know. And Iron Bowl is uh, terrified of demons also. He's uh, really superstitious. So I, it's it, it would have been probably hilarious having that, that trio there. In fact, I would highly recommend it to anybody just to see what they might have to say. They did not skimp on the dialogue in this game. They seem to have some funny little quirk from one of your party members or another for just about every every area, everything you might see or experience. It's it's pretty cool. I don't I don't know if Inquisition set a record for pages of manuscript, you know, for the for the you know dialogue and stuff. But uh, I, I wouldn't doubt it if somebody told me they did, because it's 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 pretty extensive. The one thing I think would have been cool that they had thrown in here is have some mirrors up where when you walk by you see a uh, a ghost walking with you or something along those lines. And I, I just take that from the Disneyland Haunted Mansion where you, you're sitting in these cars and uh, as you move along you can be sitting two to a car or whatever and uh, you, go, you go in front of these mirrors and it shows a ghost sitting between you and whoever you're with or sitting next to you buddying up with you and it's it's very cool. Ghosts and top hats and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's awesome, man. Awesome. Memories right there. That's when I was a kid. Okay, and these little things, I think, are clues as to where the next um, map piece is What's that, that eventually leads to whatever we need to open up a this balcony up here. And we see what kind of looks like uh, one of... Solus Elven artifacts, but it's it looks corrupted. I don't know what that means. Um, I think something about the story here is that there was a, a a little girl, and maybe it's you know the age old story of you know the parents found her with magic, and rather than send her to the circle, they kept her here, and then went and hired outside help to try to contain the magic or remove it even or something, and it went bad, and maybe the girl found a newfound little friend, you know. Someone who she could talk to at night before she goes to sleep, like a demon or something, and eventually that demon gets housed here, and um, in repayment for the demon hanging out and keeping the girl company, the demon requires that the girl keep all the guests here also, like forever, type of thing. We see lots of corpses around here, and I don't think it's all just looters. In fact, we're going to uh, start fighting endless waves of these undead, and they, they I, I believe they spawn forever. I... I would say that if you ever want to farm XP, um, this would be the place to go. Now, I mean, it's, at some point you would get no returns for the zombies, but um, they do spawn uh, just forever. <laughs> like, literally forever here. Here it goes, and I, I don't know what actually triggers the first ones to pop up. Maybe if you're just here for a certain amount of time. But, uh... Nothing really hard, actually. It, honestly, it kind of got a little annoying, actually. Because it was like, you know, you'd go backtrack looking for, you know, either stuff that you missed or the next clue or whatever, and it would just be two or three zombies here, two or three there, just, just forever. Okay, all right, so perhaps this demon is playing pretending to play little games with the girl and these games require that uh, of course these people be fed to the demon and you know in one way shape or form or another and uh, give the demon something to inhabit or raise up as playmates or something I don't know like I said I didn't get the whole story here but yeah that looks like a corrupted elven artifact up there something I don't know
I think perhaps the elven artifact up there being used in reverse is keeping... Or being used wrongly, maybe, or something is keeping the demon at bay here. Though, I mean, obviously the demon can, you know, light lamps for you and restless spirits here can, you know, cause the dead to walk and what have you. But, uh, I don't know. I, there may be actually, you know, in, in this being a side story and stuff, if, you know, unless you actually think about it, there could be some kind of lore or something in the way that this artifact is being used by maybe some, uh, uh, less than knowledgeable mage. Okay, I'm back at the entrance here. Kind of want to go where I haven't been yet without missing either of these wings over here. Okay, I think I came over here from the other side, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. You're going to see me do a lot of just backtracking and stuff, just trying to make sure I catch every corner and explore every nook and cranny of this place. Creepy at all. <laughs> all right, so we're looking for two statues similar to that or something. I don't know. There's a lot of loot here, though. I'll give them that. There were uh, loot boxes everywhere. Something is registering. Maybe they need to go back downstairs? I don't know. I'm not sure. up in the in the 20s now as far as leveling goes recently we did our our leveling video and all that stuff but uh i think 20 is pretty much that benchmark level to where you know go ahead and head, head towards the end game stuff because pretty much out leveled all the content i did read uh something just an update here um this should be up uh Oh, it's today. I think today's, what, Friday? Should be up today or tomorrow. But, um, it's something to do with the DLC for Inquisition is, uh, the PS4 and PC won't get theirs until March next month. And the, uh, of course the Xbox One guys got theirs, oh, jeez, a week ago. So that's more than a month of, of lag there between, um, the Xbox and everybody else and all that, and I understand Xbox paying their rights and whatever, and, you know, trying to right their sinking ship, and, you know, I, honestly, I, I, I see that maneuver coming across as a mistake on their part more than anything else. Act of desperation type thing. If you view it from the sidelines, not if you're an Xbox owner or fan, but uh, anyone else looking at that would say, wow, you know, that's just, that's going above and beyond. I think they're lucky that uh, Inquisition didn't decide to make itself a, uh, a PC and PS4 exclusive. They're actually very fortunate, and I think it, they're, them buying their way into it maybe prevented that from happening, actually. But, uh, whatever. Anyway, so everyone else gets their the DLC, um, oh, what is it, three or four weeks from now, I guess, March, and, you know, it's just now at beginning of April here. Look at this. So it's at least a month, and like I say, the Xbox One's been out for a Almost two weeks, what, a week and a half now already. For you, maybe. I um I d I don't know that I'm gonna get it, guys. I uh if if you know if you guys request it, if you say, Hey, you know, yeah, I'll, you know, 
get one of your characters and throw them into the the DLC. You know, just okay. You know, maybe we can maybe we can add it on or something. I may even I I, I might go so far as you know a few weeks from now, a month from now, um, this game will be I, I guess you could say fresh again. I don't mind stepping away from a game that I, I really enjoy, um, and then going back to it a little bit later when it's when it's kind of new again and I can re-experience where, you know, I have memories of previous playthroughs but still kind of excited to play again. There, you know, there's a point on any game where after hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of gameplay and you're doing the same old thing and you've seen everything a hundred times that, you know, step away for a second and, you know, was a uh, separation makes the heart grow fonder, and however that saying goes. You know, that, that type of thing. And, uh, hey, I'm, I'm back playing Dragon Age 2 right now and that's uh, it's fantastic. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is almost not quite a new game. I mean, I remember a lot of things, but I get to re-experience it, you know, it just kind of slipped from my mind a little bit, and now uh, getting back into it, it's 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 as, almost as fun as the first time I played it, type of thing. But if I were to you know do several playthroughs back to back, probably midway through my second playthrough, uh, I would be like, yeah, okay, I really have done this a thousand times. But right now it's pretty cool. Plus I have a couple DLC um, items to throw in there, you know, like uh, Legacy and uh, what Mark of the Assassin, which I haven't played at all, so that'd be cool. Maybe pay a little closer attention to things people say and do while I'm in it to get more out of it than just uh, uh, gameplay but you know maybe some maybe some lore type stuff or some history or get some insight into some other characters in the game and um, mentioned Pedro again he did say something about uh, Mark of the Assassin you can uh, I believe learn a bit about maybe Leliana's character I think is, I think is what he mentioned but uh, anyway that you know be some relevant stuff for some of the uh, main characters in the game found in that one so that'd be cool another thing to look forward to but in and of itself even if I was just playing the game by itself it, it'd, be, it'd still be fun I could see this one maybe in a month you know coming back and doing one this is more extensive than the other ones obviously playthrough can be up to you know 100 plus hours if you want it to be and um, the other Dragon Age um, in in the 30 to you know I don't know the only way you'd squeeze maybe 60 hours out of it is is to really go to look for everything and backtrack um, a lot you know to previous areas trying to you know um, min max every 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 portion of the game get every gold piece find every piece of loot every everything and stuff yeah you might you might squeeze 50 or 60 hours out of the first two games but uh, Inquisition I mean just running around I mean well you know when you spread everything out into maps that are 10 times bigger then yeah it's gonna take longer of course it is I will say something about uh, Inquisition that I learned about Skyrim is that horses are basically useless. They're, they're great to have when you think about it, but if you're not used to using one, you don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I've probably jumped on my horse, I don't know, a half dozen times? Maybe at the most? I just go there on foot. Once you put fast traveling in there, it kind of makes the horse obsolete. If there was no fast traveling, I guess it would eventually be mandatory, you know? To cut the game down from 300 hours to 200 hours, something reasonable. But, um... Since there is fast traveling, why bother? Get sort of close to where you are, walk along the way, and... Well, now, if you could loot from horseback, mm, th that might be something. You know, reach down and pick up some ore and pick up a few elf fruit here and there. Did, if I didn't have to get off my horse each time... Because get, I'll get obsessive about it. I'll see an elf fruit and I'll just like, I, I have to have that just because it's there. I don't need it, but, but, but I do need it. <laughs> and so I'll go grab it. Just because I must. Must have elf fruit and... Uh, yeah, so horses, they just, they become second thought. I really don't even bother. Now, I've been uh, intentionally avoiding the, what is it, Jaws of Hakan, or whatever they call this new DLC. Of course, intentionally avoiding it, trying not to get any any hint of what it might even be about. I really don't don't want to know. I mean, I'll find that out when I get there, type of thing. Assuming I get it and play it, I think I will. I probably will. Um, nothing else. Being excused to get a couple more trophies from the game. I I did platinum uh, this one with my with my other character. So uh, with my what rogue or my assassin or whatever. Um. To grab a few more trophies, that would be cool. But uh, trying to stay away from the story as much as possible. Um, having a uh, 
finding out that it was released, though, they did. There, there's some brief description there, and you know, I, I think I can trust Bioware not to give any real spoilers to their stuff when they advertise it, type of thing. But something along the lines of uh, you playing through, I guess, a memory or something of um, another Inquisitor. And I'm hoping they include a new dragon that's a higher level or scale to your level or something. Um, I'm just praying for an update where they, they take this, the um, the level cap away. I've mentioned that enough. I won't get back into that again. But um, I'm seriously hoping that that does come out. I don't know that enough people are crying for it, for the coders, uh, for the you know programmers to actually get in there and do something about it. I don't I, I don't think so. I don't think it's enough maybe for them to bother, but um, there's enough people sharing the same opinion, maybe so. Who knows? But uh, either way, I hope the DLC isn't isn't capped. Like, you know, you can only play it up to a certain point or it becomes obsolete. I hope that whatever level you are when you go there, at least is what level it is or something, you know. Or, you know, if they do say, hey, it's a suggested a level a such and such to set, like, say, 11 through 15 area... Then, then you know to fit it into your to your uh, story at that point. You know, I, I guess there's that, but I would hate to think uh, you would have to start a new character. Hmm, be curious how, how they plan that out. Don't think of it. Anyway, some something about playing through an old Inquisitor's story or something involving, uh, like I say, hopefully a dragon, hopefully. Also on that note, it, it's it seems kind of you know it's it's worth mentioning that um, there are some games where I find out there's DLC and I'm all over it. Like I am I am hyper about it. Even a game that I, I I'm not that fond of. Like I'll give you an example. Um, Fallout New Vegas wasn't that fond of it. Um, it was it was a good game only because there was enough Fallout 3 in it to keep me into it, type of thing. But th they left enough out to make it. It's pretty empty. It became more of a, um, let me figure out a good build for this. Like, you know, where would I put my stats? How could I min-max this? You know, that type of thing. And getting into that aspect of it, considering it's kind of kind of drawn out. You don't just go in and level in an hour and figure out how your character's going to be. You know, you kind of play through it and explore a little bit and get, you know, 10, 20, 30 hours under your belt before you decide, you know, this build works or it doesn't. Just scrap it. You know, I've done that. Okay, so, I mean, a, a lot of the gameplay came from that. Um pretty much, you know, much of the, I guess you could say, story in there. Things that you can see and experience and stuff. You know, once you've seen it, it's it's been seen. That's it. You know, done. But when that, when the DLC for that came out, and oh, uh, even more so with Fallout 3. Like, uh, Broken Steel, and I was I was crushed by Mothership Zeta. I thought it was garbage. I, it, I didn't think it was Fallout related. I thought it was just clown comic relief for a game that um, I personally took kind of seriously. It took it, it was almost kind of insulting. <laughs> a little bit. But, um, Love the pit. Um, wasn't the biggest fan of um, oh, what was that one where you went to the uh, the resort island area, uh, seaside resort. Oh my gosh, the, the name's actually actually slipping. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of that one, but it was still cool. I mean, it, for what it was, it was a little emptier. It actually, kind of reminded me a little bit of Vegas, sty New Vegas style. Right, but the pit was great. Um, Broken Steel added so much extra content to the game, gave you ten more levels, an extended playthrough. I mean, it was an excuse to start two or three more characters, just to play them through, and uh, added new areas, all new enemies. I mean, stuff like that. When those DLCs were coming out, like I'd find out about them, and I'm sweating every day until the DLCs are released. I I I can't wait. This one, I'm like, well, I probably would have bought it had I, had I been able to buy it with everyone else a month from now think uh, probably more resentment than anything else would be like you know, I really don't care wasn't that hyped about it anyway I thought you know you you don't you don't you don't reward me um you don't reward my character for leveling you don't reward me for playing through a big portion of the game in that you know the level cap is taken off the challenge is gone um a lot of things and not bickering just saying that you know overall the the you know the taste that's left in my mouth when it's all said and done is is a little bland 
You know, afterwards, the, the playing through and the building initially is great, but then you realize all the content where you're either going to go there god mode or you're just going to ignore it completely. I'm like, well, wow. And then you're going to give me more DLC on top of that. And shit, I can't play the content you did give me. I mean, I can. I can just go through and hold my trigger down, spin to win. Okay. But, um, you know, so there was already that, and then, and then they're going to, you know, delay it by a month anyway. Don't know. Don't know. But I can think of other games where, um, find out about DLC and I'm I'm even Skyrim and I really wasn't that big of a fan of, fan of Skyrim more so Oblivion much more so Oblivion just like Fallout 3 compared to New Vegas huge Fallout uh, huge Fallout 3 fan Ve Vegas fan yeah so so Oblivion fan loved it to death maybe maybe my favorite game of all time if not it's it's always going to be right up there in my heart is just one that I'm just uh, sentimentally attached to as well as I just love it everything about it very much a D and D come to life type thing Skyrim, not so much, but still, when you know Dawn Guard came out and stuff, oh my gosh, I'm sweating it. As, as soon as it's available on you know Xbox Live or PSN, I'm 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 jumping on it. Right, I'm one of the first to to download it. I've got my my uh, oh when I had Xbox, I had my Microsoft points all all set aside just for that. You know, as soon as it was available. But this one, I don't know. A month from now, I might forget about it, and somebody remind me. Hey, by the way, there's uh, Inquisition DLC. Oh, really? Okay, well, viewers haven't mentioned it, so I probably won't bother. I mean, it's really just like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually disturbing me a little bit. That there, there's that's the particular mark that you either you either hit it with your players, with your customers, with your fan base, or you don't. And they missed it with me. And I'm not exactly sure why. Well, I mean, except for the the, the reasons that I've named, that that might be it. Just simply that in a nutshell. But I don't know. Ironically enough, if they told me right now that there was a Dragon Age 2 DLC coming out, or that they were re-releasing Dragon Age 2, um, or even Origins, uh, maybe even upgrading the... Oh, man, if they included Dragon Age 2 combat with, with Origins, and, you know, maybe maybe gave options to tweak the uh, the camera issues for some people so that, you know, the, the criers and naysayers who are, are going to snivel about something, and if you don't give them the, something to snivel about, they'll snivel about that. You know, because they, if they can't find anything wrong, they'll make up something. In fact, that'll be something wrong. And they'll cry about that. Uh, I can't find anything wrong. <laughs> you know, and, and then they'll say, that's wrong. So, you know, uh, put those guys aside, the, the constant complainers, who they'll play anyway. You know, so you just let them just cry over in the corner and eventually they'll get over it, get tired and go to sleep. But um, if, if you were to tell me that um, they were going to re-release Origins or Dragon Age 2 and, and include some new DLC for it... Um, I, I would be all over that. I, I, in fact, I would buy that first. I would seriously buy that first before uh, before DLC for this one. Just for the simple fact that I know in, in Origins and Dragon Age 2, that whatever character I, I import to play through that DLC or whatever character I create or whatever, that it's going to be rewarding and challenging when I get there. In fact, it's going to be something that's going to kick my ass several times until I figure it out. Not something where I, I play it once and I say, eh, got a lucky hit, I'll get it next time, and then I do. No, there there'll be there'll be things where um, tactically and situationally um, I'll have to make adjustments with with my party and my build and things like that to meet new challenges, new enemy resistances, and things like that. I'm, I like that. I know I would get that with those two, and I would and I would I would be waiting for that like I would be a brand new game release, even though I played both games a thousand times already. I would I would play them again just because. Kind of ironic. Okay, now this is this is where I was like, you know, how many of these guys do I really have to kill? And I realized that I, it may just be forever. I mean, I guess they might stop spawning someday, but I can't tell because I mean, as soon as you walk away from an area, they spawn and they're there when you get back. Oh wow, she landed on the railing. Oh what? I, huh? That's pretty slick. She almost she looked pretty nimble, like she's pretty elfy right there, if you ask me. <laughs> Doing all that Legolas stuff from the Hobbit. I think that's his name. What the the Archer guy? Was that Legolas? Is that his I, I really don't remember. Shows you what kind of Hobbit fan I am. Sorry about that guys. 
but yeah, you know, the elf that can like jump from he can he can ride huge beasts and jump from their kneecap to their tusk to their ear and flip all over the place and grab a dude and throw him off and ride him down and land on top of him and flip flip away and do all this really cool stuff. Yeah. Sarah was showing her uh, her nimbleness right there. Okay, so this this is what this was I guess containing here. This was the girl's friend, maybe. Or demons, maybe summon. I think that's I think that's how it plays out in the story here. Is this was the girl's secret friend that was using the girl as a conduit to essentially kill anybody and everybody that came to the to the mansion here. You know, all the nobles and so on and so forth that come out to the country for a visit or what have you. Oh, there's a uh, mosaic piece for anyone collecting those. Pretending to be a painting. Okay, yeah, and there was something about a mage here. Right there in that note. Something to talk about. Comment section below, if anyone feels inclined. What exactly was up this little girl here? Don't mind leaving it just a little bit vague to give us uh, something to discuss and how it may relate to lore and things. I think this is a permanent barrier until I kill this. Uh, yeah, I see barriers on all the doors. That's what it is. So now, now they've gone Dark Souls. <laughs> Set up the fog walls so you can't uh, you can't get out. Either kill the boss or die. Two choices. I'm cool with that. These guys really, health-wise, and I guess armor-wise or whatever, these guys aren't, aren't such pushovers like they were in Origins and Dragon Age 2. They put out a little less damage, but they're ten times tankier. Whereas, um, in Origins and 2, they could do a hell of a damage. AoE damage a lot of times, but they, you know, you could one-shot some of them, you know. Are they all gone? Okay. <laughs> you can stop swinging your weapon now. They're all gone. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Amulet of power there. Um, I do believe this is a... Uh, that's an amazing amulet too, by the way. The cooldown amulet for any mage. For any mage. I mean, considering you're most likely using more active skills than the other classes. I guess it'd come in handy for an assassin too. Especially an archer. Right, but for mage, it's it's invaluable. Give it to give it to Vivian and watch her just um, keep the barrier up. <laughs> I'm talking, she's out of control with the barriers like that. She's like fight. You keep her in there with another another mage, and she's fighting to see who casts the barrier first. I, seriously, it's it's crazy. All right, well that was our haunted house, and just thought I'd throw that in there for Pedro's sake. Uh, didn't find a whole lot more here other than fade rifts and 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 a dragon, but. Uh, other than that, we'll, uh, we'll carry on. We're about to end the game here pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, click that button on top. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.